Go ahead. No, I'm not going to introduce myself. They, they all know who I am. The record? You got to make a like an intro so people know what you're talking about. Then. Gee, I've never done this before. Right? Okay. I, this is something that I covered uh, a couple of years ago, but I, I'm going to do it again. It's the easiest antenna to ever put up is a random wire, and like it shows here in this, you know, there's a tree and. You take some paracord and an insulator, and you come back here to the barn that looks like a house, house that looks like a barn, and you feed it with coax out of your upstairs bed, red room window into this, and you put a, the hot side of your coax or your ladder line onto the radiating element, and the other one has to be grounded really well and have a counterpoise. And if it's got to be as counterpoise has to make up for the same length as that wire is. And you can drop it down and go around. If you have aluminum siding on it or aluminum anything, you can use that as part of your counterpoise. You could use your rain gutters, which, oh man, I didn't put rain gutters on my house. But anyway, they'll be back to do that again not tomorrow when they finish it. So anyway, that's the easiest antenna there is to make. And all you'd have to do is hook it up to a tuner and and that random wires, uh, you don't have to pull out a calculator, you just put up a wire, but you don't have to do any math, and it's going to tune up perfectly. <clears throat> one single wire, one connection, and it works. Well, you would think that's what they mean when they say a random wire, but that's all not true. <clears throat> uh, if you do that, you're gonna end up with an SWR that you can't control with a tuner, and you can't uh, do much with it and your signal won't go where you think it's going to go because any random length of wire just doesn't cut it. There has to be some math involved. <clears throat> and the reason, now there's a couple of quick ones that you can do and it'll work for one band. Now this here, this question mark over lambda, you can, you can have a quarter wave that on the lowest frequency you want to use and it will work on that frequency, on that, uh, that band that you're, you just, you know, if you go like 145 feet or so, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> it's going to work on 160 meters. Will it work on anything else? Probably not. You may get another band somewhere that it'll work, but you're going to always have to have a tuner on it and your tuner has to be grounded. But the other thing to think about uh, these things work pretty good for power under 100 watts. If you go over 100 watts, there's going to be RF in the shack, and it bites you in your fingers. And you got to make sure that you're grounded inside the shack for RF ground as well. So, in essence, a random wire antenna is the wrong name for this antenna. It's about the stupidest name that they've given anything. Uh, to give you the idea that you can just randomly put up any kind of wire. So what have we found out? Uh, this, this took a little bit of math to come up with, with the answers here. Uh, to come up with something that will work. Now there, there are formulas that have come with some of the tuners that I have that will tell you <coughs> what lengths of wire to avoid for any specific band. And if you, um, if you follow that, you can find uh, calculations to avoid, but trying to find something to tell you what lengths to use is a little more difficult. It takes a little bit more math. Um, so, why, why should those lengths be avoided? Uh, they will create, that's a good question. Okay, suppose you were looking at uh, <clears throat> the current load on this antenna. An antenna, there's, antennas work because they have a standing wave on them. So if you're looking for a low impedance here at the feed point of you know, like 50 to 70 ohms, you want to have a, a length that's going to bring that, you know, if you're at a half wave, well, that's not very much of a sinusoidal wave, is it? But you get my idea. You're going to come up here at a half, a quarter wave, and then if you were to follow this through, it would eventually come back down and do your, your whole sinusoidal wave. If that is at the wrong wavelength, this 
feed point, this will shift and you'll be coming in at a higher SWR than a tuner can handle. Or uh, you know, at some point you'll, you'll find that it won't tune because the tuners have their limits. Is that answer? I, I missed part if I wandered off there somewhere. Does that answer that? Yeah, you did. Okay. So anyway. I, I, in my reading, I, I found that they, they say that if it is not an odd, mul odd multiple of quarter wavelengths of any of the free, any of the bands you want to use, mm -hmm. then. It, it, it will work as a random wire. Repeat that first part of your sentence again. From what I have read, if your wire is not an odd number of quarter wavelengths of on any of the bands that you want to use, then it will work as a random wire. And random meaning just put it up there and go. But you still well, have to it, you still have to have the, the proper white line, length of wire. But that's kind of what it, that's well, kind of what yeah, it is. Yeah, but it can be a loosely loosely called a, a one size fits all. I'm getting to that. Um, okay, Ed, if you were to try this on different frequencies, chances are you would come in at a different impedance and it'll be a high current <clears throat> and it's too high, you want to keep that current low. Now if you were to want to put up a, a one, one wire that's going to fit all your bands that you want to do, you want to find what you said, a length that will give you those multiples at any given ham band frequency so that you have your lower current point. Now it may not be down as low as it is on one band. It may shift up and down a little bit. You may be seeing a shift and you will. <clears throat> You'll see a shift in in the feed impedance at that at that point. Yeah. But those multiples are what you do not want. <clears throat> right. Unless you're right now you don't want them off to be you don't want where they are at a high impedance. Well, for starters, let's just say we don't want something that would be, say, one quarter length on 80 and three quarter lengths on, or th uh, three quarter wavelengths on some, like, some other band right. that we want to operate. Mm -hmm. Now I've. And, you know, we want it to be either longer than a quarter on 80 and. Right. You know. You're, you're ahead of me. <laughs> <I'm getting laughs> I see. Uh, okay. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry that what? page wasn't in the notes. <laughs> he, he's right, but we're, we're getting to that. Now, what I've come up with is I, I found some charts and uh, a program that will let you decide where you want to go. Now, let me put the chart up. are the wavelengths at, uh, where's the word pointer? If you look at these, <clears throat> these are the ones to stay away from. And if you pick some that are in between them, <clears throat> you can actually find your quarter wavelength uh, feet that work the best. And these are in feet, and I have personally tried from here back. 
I've tried them. And they actually work. Right now I'm at 148 on a long wire, random wire, and a name that I choose not to use because it's not just random, it, it's one that works. <clears throat> and then that one I know covers 160 through 10 because I use it all the time. Yeah. There's a lot of discussion about lengths, but what gauge wire do you use? Uh, depends on your on what you're doing. Uh, I've used uh, for the one that I use. I have 12 gauge wire because it's what I had, stranded and it works or, fine. Or comp or uh, what? Stranded? It doesn't matter. You can you can you can use what you want. I use uh, in stranded in this one is what I've used. And I had it at 203. Now there's some things that happened. I'm gonna pass this chart around to you so you all have it so I don't have to have that up there. Um, take one down, pass it all around. And I'm gonna get rid of that because I wanna cover some other things too. What are you saying? In other words, 107 feet worse. But yeah. If you're on the three feet shorter or three feet longer, it, it won't. Doesn't. It won't work. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Some of these you'll see are even tighter, like uh, 203. No, no, that's that's pretty that's right far. in the middle. That's right in the middle. It's right in the middle. Yeah. But they are that critical. And yes, I've tested that idea too. They are that critical. So <clears throat> I'm sure having the tree there makes a bit of difference. That, that does. <laughs> now there's another thing that happens when you get these long wires, and I'm just going to uh, use this as an example. Here's the feed point, and here's the turn of the hardware house of tree. You got this, the signal coming off of these. The, ideally, you want it to be kind of an omnidirectional antenna, and at some frequencies it's going to be that, but as higher up in frequency you go, it's going to start lobing. And when you're, if you're at the highest frequency that you're working, instead of it being coming off the edges, you're going to find it doing probably a lobe. It's, it's going to be more directional off the end, is what I'm getting at. It's going to start going off the end more than off the sides. So when you get up to uh, you know, like 10 meters, you're pretty directional off the end. And again, I did test that with the appropriate equipment, the uh, field strength meter, and it is true. Uh, and that's why I went back to the, uh, the one at 148 feet, because when I had it up at 203, when I was up at, uh, say, 10 meters or 15, I was shooting off the end, which would have been okay. It, was, it would reach Europe, but I wanted to reach other places too, so I shortened it and it brought it out a little wider. It's still off the end, but it's at 15 and 20 meters, I, I got rid of more of the lobe when I went shorter. So, in this chart that you all have, uh, you have the, the wire figures that actually worked. And I guess the end result is, it isn't random as it may think, if you want it to work on all the bands. And that's kind of where it comes through. More discussion. Anybody questions or thoughts? Has anybody tried these? Well, there's, there's a couple things. A couple things to keep in mind. Any kind of an antenna like you're running like this, you want to run it against against a very good ground. Right. Ground is very important. That's why. Even, I even if that means just taking a bunch of wire and laying it out on the ground, letting the grass grow up around it. That's you got to do something. Right. Well, that's why I said at the beginning, you have to have a good counterpoise. And the one I have, the house that I'm in is 1968 aluminum siding. And that whole house is a Faraday cage. <laughs> so I, I grounded everything around the building, which probably would not have had to, but I did. And I have the 
tuner on the on the gable of the house attached to the aluminum siding and then I have another ground coming out of it too but that whole house became the counterpoise and because that tuner is out at the antenna I don't have RF in the shack the antenna tuner will only handle 120 watts so I don't use a linear on it anyway but that's that's how I did it but if you don't and if you don't put a uh, loop six six turn six inch loop in your cable coming in you're going to get RF back in so you got to have it grounded really well like Nick said and do anything you can to keep that ground that RF off of it do you use one of these no. have you ever I've, no I've been I've been researching them because I, I was thinking about putting one up I I like having it up because it's so windy where I am that uh, dipoles fall down a lot and this one I have attached to the barn and to the to the house and it makes a little dog like past a uh, area light which really messes it up at times but um, it's it's stable it's there it's, it always works and and they're good now you said about what gauge wire these have become popular for backpackers and hikers and the best way to run these is actually to hook it directly to the radio. So when you're outdoors, you can get a little, make a little tuner and put it in an Altoid case and, or you can buy them, any tuner, and keep it short and right to your radio. Ground that tuner so you don't burn yourself with RF, but uh, most of the backpackers are using QRP or something anyway, and it doesn't matter, but they'll use magnet wire or anything that's light to carry. And it does work and they can tune them on almost any band a lot of them have <clears throat> an SWR meter built in to that radio and that makes it easier to tune with a tuner but that's uh, again mine's mine's thicker because I have a wind problem up there and I don't want it to blow apart so Terry another, another thing to keep in mind is there are some tuners out there with a very wide matching range. So wide, in fact, <laughs> that it will allow you to match an open circuit or a dead short to your transmitter. Yeah. All that means is that all your power is being consumed in the tuner. <laughs> That's right, it's all being consumed in the so tuner. You, yeah. you know, so just because it tunes up does not necessarily mean it is radiating. That's right. That's that's a good point. I I like to not use tuners uh, for that reason. No matter what, you're you're losing power in that tuner, and that's why my dipole. I have a multi-band dipole up that is tuned right smack in the middle of the bands that I want to use. The only time I need a tuner on it is for, if I want to do 15 because it takes a 40 meter antenna and uses that as a 15. <clears throat> but otherwise, no tuners. And if you're running QRP, the last thing you want in there is a tuner. You want to have it so it's, you don't have to lose your power through that. Yep. Back to your wire size. If you're doing backpacking, you're doing <coughs> 20 gauge, 25 gauge, 30, uh, and you're using 12 at home, is, is one, I mean, if you're using 10 watts, I imagine, but if you're pushing, it doesn't matter? No, but I would never use it at home. I, the reason is, if you're backpacking, mm -hmm. you're going to put an antenna up and down anyway. Right, right. So, if it tears, you, you just... So, performance isn't it, it's if it tears or... Yeah, okay. it, it tears. The, the, the okay. light stuff, you know, you're in a QSO and a backpack and a hawk comes along and sits on your wire. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. It wouldn't be good for the hawk either. Right? No, it would be tickle its feet. I was going to say. Yeah. So any anybody else? Well, that's all I got. Uh, hang on to those if you're trying to do random wires, uh, and if you're listening at home, <laughs> we can. I'll put this on somewhere you can print it out. It's uh, everything you need to know about the lengths to use that will give you all the bands. And the other thing to keep in mind, and when you're doing this chart. If you want your lowest band to be 160 meters, you're going to want the 148 feet one. 
if you're down at uh, 80 meters, 119 might be your point, or even down to 71 feet, uh, because you know, that'll give you your quarter wave. They, they do work, they work fine, and the thing that I get mostly on uh, 160 meters when they hear what I'm using, they all chuckle and say, well, when are you gonna put up the rest of the antenna? Well, that house is the rest of the antenna, and it, it does perform. So your counterpoise has to be 71 feet if you have 71 feet of copper hanging out there? I would start with that, but I wouldn't stop at that. Okay. I would keep until you've got one heck of a ground on that thing that's, that's because it's going to be squirrely in the tuner if you don't have a good ground. And squirrely meaning if you touch it or whatever, your, your tuner, you're going to see it's, it change. You don't want that. You want your want it to be well grounded and ground your uh, tuner which is another thing maybe for next month why a tuner is the wrong name for what we call an antenna tuner it's not it's a transmatch and when i was a young man we called them transmatches we didn't call them antenna tuners and they used them in spark gap here. they used them in spark gap yeah mm -hmm. that was our final stage before the antenna mm -hmm. but the thing is with the if you think of it as a transmitter matcher, you won't be in the, in the mindset of thinking that it's tuning that antenna way out there. So we'll get into that more next time. Okay, if nothing else. Like the height, the height of the ends where they're secure? Well, get in these, I put them up as high as I can. I, I think, uh, well, I used uh, the wrong military poles. I used fiberglass. And my end started out up about 40 some feet. And then the fiberglass would chip and break and fall off and I go back and put them on again. So I went to metal ones <clears throat> and I don't know where it stands now, but it's, I know it's a lot higher than the electrical service wires that are around the farm. So they're up there pretty high. But the higher you go with it, the better it's gonna work because you end away from the ground effects of, that's gonna affect it. And your radio is the same length as a uh, wire, 148 feet. I would. What? That's what you should have, yeah, as a minimum. But like Nick said, the more you ground it, the better it's going to work. You'd probably, you'd probably be better off with uh, six pieces of 30 foot wire arranged in a pattern than you would with one 150 yeah. piece of wire just running straight. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, that's, they're, they're a tricky antenna to make work, but the key to them is your ground system to make it work. And that's in addition to the earth ground. The earth ground is, a, is yeah, that's, that's an electrical ground. You, you're looking for an RF ground. But I, what I did with mine was I grounded the aluminum siding to the dirt as well, and just for an extra precaution. I don't get burned on it anywhere. It's working. But I was looking at putting one up that I could run higher power to and haven't done that. And it's not gonna snow for a long time yet, so I have plenty of time to work on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all I got in the meeting, seven o'clock.